السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. نحمد الله ونصلي على رسول الكريم. Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I hope that uh, after the lunch everybody is a little bit sleepy. Hope uh, that I will not be very much boring for you. And after you have listened to long speeches uh, uh, throughout the day. First of all, let me to thank uh, the center and uh, 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 Professor Dr. Uh, uh, Masuri uh, and uh, uh, also the University of Dasha uh, for organizing this important event. <coughs> I think we all know that the most important thing is that people should have the freedom to express their views, their impression, and we have to be tolerant, patient, and listen carefully and find common ground for common understanding for others, a challenge which is common to all Africans. And I think this is one of the beauty and importance of this gathering today. And uh, you have uh, listened to the views and point of views of uh, different friends and brothers from Afghanistan. First, let me to, to just highlight a three points regarding the background paper that, uh, 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 that was distributed this morning. Uh, first, the issue of peace, stability, and security in Afghanistan is not that simple. It is deep, complicated, and have deep roots in the past and also particularly in the past 30 years. So whenever we talk about Afghanistan, we should not just scratch the surface. We have to go deeper and recognize the problems. And also, uh, uh, we have to, uh, uh, to realize that the conflict in Afghanistan uh, is beside of its internal dimension. It is more fueled by regional and beyond regional conflicting interests that they are fighting their battle on, on the country or on the land which is called Afghanistan. That will make the life more, compli more complicated for Afghans and sometimes you will not see the back of the ideas, the approaches and the strategies that how Afghans are being used and misused to fight for the interest of others. This is why uh, I'm saying that the situation of peace and war in Afghanistan is much more complicated than the emotional expression of ideas that how we can achieve stability in the country. Second, people of Afghanistan is a peace-loving people. Every one of us are talking about the Afghans and different parties, but we never talk about ordinary people, what they think. We say that we have to come together, different parties. I think they hate the politicians. They hate those who are leading the wars, who are leading uh, their own separate power bases to achieve their goal only through military means. There are other ways that how you can achieve stability if we really respect the wishes and the, the ideas that how the people want that country to be kept peaceful. I very much uh, agree with the, with, the, with the suggestion that uh, uh, Zayif Zayib has expressed this morning. Those were very valid points and that was very important for us. Second, there was an issue regarding the different laws in Afghanistan. We know that there is uh, different laws. There is no different laws. There is different interpretation of the laws. And for that reason, I think our constitution is firmly saying that no laws that is not in accordance to the Islam can be applied in Afghanistan. That is the first clause of Afghanistan constitution. Every time, in any country, in any society, you will have a framework, but that framework can be developed, it can be improved, 
but we should not every time return to the square one and, and start to, 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 to destroy everything and say that let's do something new. So for that reason, I think there is always room for improvement. There is a way that how to improve, and there is the way that how to get the views of the different parties and incorporate in a framework that is acceptable for the people of Afghanistan, and that can be that can be a a, a, a tool that will bring all Afghans together. We all remember that people of Afghanistan have struggled. They lost their life, as my brother David said that he has mentioned. They lost their life, a lot of sacrifice, and, uh, and, and, and uh, to, even today, it is, you cannot find a family in Afghanistan that have not have been suffered because of losing their family members, their relatives, their uh, property, their assets. But whether we want to go back to repeat the same, the same history, the same mistake of the 90s. After all the sacrifice, we went into the chaos of the civil war. So, this is now the time that we have to think two times before we think that, yes, the troops should withdraw, should complete, Afghanistan should become independent, Afghanistan should become a, 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 a sovereign state, and how to achieve that whether the only way to achieve that is through a military means or there is political means that can accelerate the process and that can unite the people of Afghanistan. And that unity of effort between the different Afghans will help to accelerate without the bloodshed. So we need wisdom. The wisdom of thinking clearly, and I think a good example is just you, you hear that uh, the, the election in Egypt is concluded. The Muslim Brotherhood uh, party succeeded. How they succeed? There was no gunshots. They were just that square. scared. Where, where the Muslim Brotherhood had come to the streets, they have uh, rose the, 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 the slogans, and uh, they hold the election. If the people want it, why not? So if we claim that we have the support of the people of Afghanistan. Why we should be afraid to come to the vote of the people? But to go to that point, we need to create an environment and a condition that all the people freely, securely have the right to use their right. If we don't have that situation, no matter how hard we try, we will not achieve stability in Afghanistan. There is a lot of, uh, I can talk a lot about the past, but I don't want to talk about the past. Uh, because uh, many of you have heard and the media focus on Afghanistan so much. And I don't want to defend whether the government has done a good job or a bad job, or what is the problem, where is the problem. And I think as a human being, every government, every individual, and all of us make mistakes. But we have to learn from our mistake. But we have to be future looking. And we have to, we have to work together that how we can, uh, we can, we can, we can architecture and engineer a roadmap that will pave the way for all Afghans to live together in peace with each other, to live in peace with this neighbor, and at the same time, they will, they will not face with the three points that was mentioned this morning uh, uh, from the Turkish uh, NGO, the ignorance, the poverty, and the internal competition, and the external intervention. So, I mean, that is, that is, that is something that we, we are here, and we want to see that how we Afghans can be helped to move to that direction. We want to say that we want sovereignty. But whether we are rightly or wrongly, we have the same, the same perception and impression of sovereignty. Whether we are thinking sovereignty as it was perceived in the 18th and 19th century, or we are living in the 20th, 21st century. 
In the 21st century, I think many things have changed. Today you have multinational companies, but at that time, you didn't have that. And at that time, no multinational companies would be allowed to invest in different countries because it was a final coverage of the national of the sovereignty. You have communication system that you cannot control it. You can call from here to Afghanistan to any city and they can end. But at that time, all those systems were controlled and monopolized and nobody was allowed to share those information. And in fact, when you talk about sovereignty, the first and important aspect of that is if a country can stand economically on its own feet and can support its own national security, civil and institution, who can provide services to its own people, and then you have to live in cooperation with all the rest of the world. Because we are living in a globalized world. In this globalized world, you have to change those, those, those terms and those conditions, and we have to live in reality. If you are dependent on somebody else's economic support, no matter how independent you are, but behind the door you are forced not to do this or that. If you borrow from IMF, whether you will be allowed not to ignore the, 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 the condition of IMF? No. If you want to take something from, uh, from the World Bank, whether you are allowed to, to do and operate on your own? So everything depends on how you, you perceive your, your sovereignty. This is, this is an important element. Let me come to, to put my proposal on how Afghans can reach to, it, to stability and to peace and deconstruction. Whether it is possible, whether it is not possible, this is a good question. How peace and deconstruction will be possible in Afghanistan? The first important uh, point to uh, respond to this question it is yes, it is possible, and, uh, but over the, the legacy of the past 33 years has divided people in Afghanistan. They are separated, they are leaving some because they were ignored, they were not part of the process, some they become monopolized with the power. And, uh, and there were a lot of rivalries were created inside. And I think because of those mesh of the different network and uh, proxies that were supported by the different countries created the different power bases in Afghanistan. And that was the reason why it is very much important that the reconciliation is not a wish, it is essential, it is needed. It is something that the future of Afghanistan will depend on that, that the Afghan people should be able to tolerate each other, to talk with each other, to listen to each other, and eventually come to agree with each other for a common future for all people in Afghanistan and also for the region. As I said before, there is, there is excuses and there is genuine reason why this fighting is not ending to in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is occupied, this is one big question. The second, the dignity of the Afghans are undermined. This is another excuse that is always being used. The third, there is there is not inclusiveness. That is the, the third very important uh, voting board that is always being in the discussion. And at the same time, as I mentioned before, and I will be very frank, uh, I hope it's off the table with the media. Uh, as I mentioned before, that there is, Afghanistan is the battleground of the comp competing interests of the regional countries. Pakistan, India, United States, Iran. Afghanistan is in the middle of uh, emerging economy of the world. There is China becoming a big power. There is uh, Russia, it is re-emerging. There is India. And the future of the economy 
in the future of the resources is laying in this region. Naturally, there is competition there. In Afghanistan, in its strategic location, make it more vulnerable. But it is also an important opportunity for Afghanistan to become a hub for economic in uh, integration. And that is why we have put a policy with five key pillars. The first and important pillar is to address the excuse of occupation. And that is the process of transition. We are welcoming a close cooperation between all parties that we have to succeed with a transition. It means that we have to have the ability not to create a, uh, the ability to defend our own people, not to create a vacuum, and not to go to the chaos of the civil war. For that reason, you should have a timetable, you should have efforts. I'm not saying that the National Army is perfect, this is perfect, this, is, this cannot be done. But all these can be improved. It should be part of the package for better understanding. So, so that is the transition process is the most important. We have started that, but that cannot succeed unless there is a genuine political process. So the second pillar is the peace and re 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 reconciliation. And as uh, 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 brothers uh, mentioned before, the first important element for the peace process to move forward is the confidence building. And more important than that is the political commitment from all sides. We have to leave emotion. We have to come to the reality of the ground. Every day, between 30 to 40 Afghans are being killed or injured, no matter who they are, whether they are Taliban, whether they are Afghan soldiers, whether they are civilians. Who they are? They are Afghans. So why we should not put an end to this chaos? So for that reason, the first important issue for us is political commitment, that we are committed to a political process. And for a, for a, for a little while of time, we have to remove our hat of different names. You will not find a single politician that they are not carrying a bag of the past. Somebody will be accused they are Talib, somebody will be accused they are Islamic, they are Jamian, they are healthy, there is Pershami, there is this party, this is this party. So how much we can divide this? We need our people as our greatest human asset. This is the biggest capital. And this capital has to be utilized more effectively. So that is the second pillar of our, our policy. The third important element of our policy is that every day or every time, as we will witness over the past 33 years, change of a regime to another regime. When we can change, then they will clear everybody and they will bring a new, a new group of people and they will remove. They, that was why we lost the bureaucracy. We lost an institution. It is very easy to destroy them, but it is extremely difficult to rebuild them. So it is always true to improve, to reform, to make it inclusive, and to make it effective. So this is. This is also a common point that we all Afghan have must work together. But this is not the way that we have to work, that somebody from a position of uh, monopoly and somebody from a position of uh, some ignorance or, or, or not given uh, full rights or, uh, or, 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 or uh, opportunity for them to express or to contribute or to participate. The third, the, the, the fourth important uh, pillar is the issue of Afghanistan stability and political a guarantee that Afghanistan will not move back into the chaos of civil war. I think civil time 
the issue of strategic partnership with the U.S. is uh, mentioned here. That is a public uh, effort. I will ask um, ladies and gentlemen who are sitting in this, please look to that. Which class, which part of it, you understand the Afghans of it? Or it is a way to move forward that Afghanistan will take responsibility. But there is, there should be a clear way with the wisdom that the Afghans should take all those responsibility. All the detention centers should be transferred to the Afghan side. The violence should, should end. Afghanistan should have its own institution like any other country. And those institutions should be truly national institutions. So somebody should not feel, because this institution is dominated by this group or that group, I don't feel secure. When I talk about economy, let's give you some figure. More than 61 to 62% of the Afghan population are of the age of below 25. A very young population and very high rate of unemployment. Forty-eight percent of the Afghan population was living below the poverty line. Afghanistan is heavily dependent on the foreign aid. The drawdown of the foreign troops will also have this economical impact. If you combine all of them and look to the scenario of the 2014, it is easy to criticize that we or criticize or emotionally say that yes. We want this to be achieved. Everything should be done like this. But the first thing is, where is the land if those forces are withdrawn? There is no regional countries who will be intervening in a different way and make Afghanistan more vulnerable to, 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 to internal conflicts and continuation of its, uh, its, uh, its uh, uh, difficult situation. For that reason, I think in a few days' time, there will be the Tokyo Conference. The purpose of the Tokyo Conference, where uh, nearly uh, 80 countries and international organizations will be gathered in Tokyo, and will be discussing the transformation decade in Afghanistan. No matter who is the president, no matter who will be in power. But the important thing is that Afghanistan needs the support of the international community. This is how his Excellency the President, President Karzai, has outlined this four point agenda for the stability of Afghanistan. And I think that is also a very important milestone that the support of the international community to help in the rebuilding, to help in the institution building, and at the same time, that will also help uh, that Afghanistan will not go into the chaos of the civil war and also help Afghanistan to be able to use its own resources that eventually to become independent of, of, of too much or too much dependency on the foreign aid. So that is that is why it is very much important that we should, should also think about fiscal stability beyond 2014. And that is how we are discussing with our international partners how they should be done. And finally, the fifth important pillar of our strategy is the regional cooperation and international uh, uh, support. Why regional cooperation? Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, there is rivalries, there is uh, uh, mistrust, uh, uh, there is policies and strategies towards Afghanistan. Uh, as, as a part of the national security strategies of different countries in the region that will be contradicting each other and that contradiction will create a space for the continuation of violence. So that is why we want to have a constructive dialogue with Pakistan, with other countries in the neighborhood, with the Muslim countries, because this is how Afghanistan will see its stability agenda to move forward. Let me to, to focus a little bit on, on, the, on, on the peace and reconciliation. Because you cannot discuss peace and reconciliation in isolation. You have to, to look it into the broader context. If there is no good governance, peace and reconciliation will not succeed. 
If there is no commitment, it will not succeed. If there are still obstacles, it will not succeed. Uh, and I, 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 I agree with, with, with suggestions that were made. We need a deeper debate among all actors that this process should be made inclusive. It should be not monopolized either by government or somebody else. It is something that all Afghan people has the right to participate, contribute, and to express their views, and finally we have to find a way that how we can move forward. There is a good opportunity for uh, if, uh, if we are having claims that we have this percentage of population support or that percentage of the population support, uh, then uh, uh, 2014, let's work together to have a better security for a fair and free election where all sides can participate and they can test uh, their own ability and level of support from the public. If the trade from their head is removed and they are not brought to the ballot boxes on the point of the gun, then you will see that what is the real judgment of the public? We have to work for that. And that is a good opportunity for reconciliation. There was there were a lot of mistakes we made. There is no doubt about that. Uh, houses were searched by false information. People were forced uh, and trapped in such a situation. Uh, whether they had to resist or they would be handed over. There were, uh, there were, there are sanctions. There are lists uh, where uh, there are ban on the travel. There is the August issue. And I think I, I, uh, we, we had a lot of discussion about this issue. And I think there is a broader agreement on, on, on that. There should be an office. There should be an authorized representative from all sides. They should be free, safe to negotiate, go to the negotiation, return back from negotiation without the shape. Because without that, there is no meaningful negotiation with it. I'm also saying that we have to we have to aim for a durable, just peace, but not for a durable negotiation, because that would prolong everything. Uh, uh, but a durable peace is the most important aspect that we all Afghans are waiting desperately for that. I think it is an action plan. We have to jointly agree on, a, on an action plan and step by step how to move forward. The first, as I mentioned, that the confidence building, what measure we have to take, the political commitment, all sides should publicly announce that we are committed to the political process. We are committed that we will talk with each other, with everyone. We should not use the, 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 the experience of the 90s that uh, uh, we have here, because something in the, in the Geneva Accord, uh, it was missing, which was the Afghan aspect of the plan for, for, for the, the Soviet who lived who was pushed to leave Afghanistan, uh, but there was not a clear plan how to, to look into the governance issue, to the other political issues, and uh, really something was architecture in this capital, in that capital, of this country, in that country, this is why it's supposed to be. We should not repeat that. So the second important part after the, after the, 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 the uh, political commitment is the confidence building. What measure is required from the government and the national community side they have to do? What kind of measure is also required from the different uh, different uh, uh, opposition groups that they, they, they also have to come forward with uh, their own uh, political commitment? The third important element of action, there should be an agreement that we have to make transformation from militancy to political process. Any organization who, who cannot transform themselves from a pure military organization to a political organization, it will be difficult to achieve uh, stability or peace uh, in Afghanistan. And that will be, uh, that, will, that should be part of the process. 
and, uh, and that will include ceasefire and things like that. So that is the and third, fourth point. I think every side should come with their clear proposals, what they want, and how those proposals can be discussed. Proposal cannot be discussed in the in the heart or in the in, in, in back tools. We have to discuss, put it to the public, agree with the public, build a consensus, and I think we need a broader efforts for consensus building among the Afghan society. And, and, and that consensus building will give us a lot of advantage in room that what is the middle ground that all different sides can agree on a meaningful peace agreement. And then there is condition for its implementation, who should implement it, what is the advantage for its implementation, and what is, the, what is the situation for its monitoring? So all these, all these issues need to be carefully designed, discussed, agreed, and then move forward. I think in the history of Afghanistan, we were very good at the battlefield. We succeeded. But whether there is a, there is a single instance that after the success, we benefit. So we should not only think about the success in the battlefield, but we also should think about the wisdom of how to benefit from the struggle and sacrifice that, that our people, our country, and our economy should benefit. So that is, that is the main aim, the main goal. Why we, sh we should kill ourselves? Why we should sacrifice? Because it's a better future. If you want a better future, and then at the end of our struggle, if we, we fail to achieve that, it means that our struggle and the struggle of those people to sacrifice, it is just gone. So this is why I, I think it is the time for patience, the time for tolerance for all Afghan sides, and the time for the international community to respect the Afghan lead. It is not some, somebody else should tell us, this is good for you, this is good for you. It is not good for us that I say that. I will talk with this, I will not talk with that. I will talk, sit with this, I will not sit with that. We have to be ready to accept challenges, difficult discussion, but we have to tolerate it. We have to be patient. And this is what our religion teaching us. This is what Quran is teaching us. And this is what the humanity is focusing on. It. And, and that, that is how the people of Afghanistan will be served better. In terms of uh, whether Afghanistan has made some progress or not, because uh, 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 this morning you hear that nothing is happening. Uh, I think the, uh, you cannot compare what happened in Afghanistan in the last 10 years to the, to the previous nearly 50 years, whether it is infrastructure, whether it is education. And I think you have uh, listened to the presentation of our uh, good uh, friend uh, from the board, uh, the chairman of the board of the, uh, the Hindu uh, Afghan Talk. Uh, I think this is one of the qualitative education system in Afghanistan. It is, it is balanced how the Afghan culture, Islam, and science is coming together and to make a difference in Afghanistan. Afghanistan should not be seen as Afghanistan of 10 years ago. There is a new generation. There is the young Afghan boys and girls. They are, they are going to education. They are learning. They are not carrying the bag of the past. They are future-looking people. And I think we cannot bring them back to the square one. So I think that is, that is the biggest asset, I think, that we have to utilize. I was very pleased to hear that the policy that to not to burn the school not to close the school. Uh, it is a very, very good and good news. Uh, as you all may know that, there is still hundreds of schools still closed in some part of the country, particularly in the south. There are many, many of those children are denied to have access. 
Um, and I think that is the most unfortunate situation that part, partly people are, can go to education where partly people cannot go to education. And I have, I, I should say, this should be the first point or the first agenda for cooperation between the different sides, whether government, whether uh, it is Taliban, whether it is Hizb Islami, or whether any other party. Because the future of our children depends to all of us. If we deny access to them, if they are not, not able to go to school and learn, I think we are making a big, a big mistake. Uh, I hope this, this would be a kind of a unifying factor that from where we can start. I think any other issue with the close cooperation can be obvious. When I say that we should remove the excuses, the international forces community say that we are here in Afghanistan because there is threat to our country, because there is violence, there is extremism, there is all these things. We are saying, you are there, this is why we are fighting. But why? This is the issue of like a chicken and egg. Why we all Athens cannot come together and say, we are now safe in our homes. You were there, please go to your home. The trait is now joined the office. We have to go and in the end for that war. And I think that will accelerate the process. And this is what President Karzai is always publicly saying. And I think you will not find a president where 100 and something, 20, 30,000 troops are uh, in, in their country, and then he is publicly saying that no more air rights can take place in Afghanistan. So I think there is no difference between the Ashtons in terms of loving their country, freedom, uh, and, and they are, they are all, all people maybe with a, the different kind of a perception, the different tactics that they want to achieve their goals. But the goal is the same. A prosperous, stable, peaceful Afghanistan. If we all aim for that, I think uh, we, can, we can leave our differences behind. We can find a common way. And I wish that uh, we can continue this debate in the future in a more meaningful way with the concrete proposals, with the concrete ideas. And I will stop here because I talk too much. Thank you very much.